guys welcome back to the channel daughter of increase my name is nays and for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video i post new videos every tuesday thursday and saturday all about my faith god christ and expanding the kingdom of god today's video as you guys can see from the title above is going to be a study with me video and it is going to be using this jonah bible study from priscilla shire I first want to shout out my sis Stephanie for sending this to me. She sent this to me months ago around the time that we were preparing to do the Daughter of Increase Jonah Bible study and I'm finally, finally into it. Um, I got into this at the end of June. I'm currently in week three and I am thoroughly enjoying it so much. So I'm going to get into the tools that I'll be using and then dive into what this is and then start the study. So first I want to apologize if you guys hear the fan. It is pretty hot. And I tried turning off the fan. It just does not work. So you guys will, will hear the fan in the background. So I apologize. Um, I'm going to try to speak as loud as I can. So yeah, bear with me on that. Um, so we have the Bible study here. And then we have this pouch. Which is the pouch that I use for all of my annotating when it comes to my Christian nonfiction books. As well as my Bible study books. So this pouch I literally got from Dollar Tree years ago I had two of these I had a blue one and then I had a purple one so I use this pink one just to keep all of my annotating supplies as you can see so I just keep a pen which is a big round stick I have all of the colors that I use um, so I have the Sharpie smear guard highlighters as well as the Crayola super tip I just really like highlighting with those my annotating key which is a little messed up I need to fix that and update it so I'm just gonna sit this right here in front of me and I think that's all that I'm going to use in the pouch. I'm just going to take one of these like cardstock bookmarks to help me keep a straight line. These are from Baker Books when I get their uh, review books for um, for review in the mail. Sorry, I, I keep a lot of these. Literally, I keep a bunch of these so that I can use them for making straight lines. So we have that. And I just put all of that inside of here. Um, I also have my Bible of choice which is this baby here which is my new favorite bible i've raved about this before but it is the new king james spirit filled life study bible i this is my new baby i love this bible so much i love it for at home studying use it's phenomenal this is literally like it is amazing and i'm gonna do a flip through soon of this bible but let me just flip through with you guys quickly um yeah, I, I, I really, really just adore this Bible so much. So, yeah, we have that. I don't always use my Bible with the Bible study because I just use my phone app. So, we do have my phone. And I'm just going to open up the Bible app right now. So, like I said, we have my phone with the Holy Bible app, which is actually in the midst of... There we go. You version. It's up. Um, It is loading. Let me turn my screen light up get rid of all of these notifications but yeah we have that just in case so let's move this bible to the side for now and dive into this so priscilla shire for those of you who don't know she is the daughter of dr tony evans she is the sister of anthony evans who is a gospel singer and she is a just phenomenal woman she was the actress in um the movie war room in which she played elizabeth and she also wrote the book fervent she will also be playing in the movie overcomer which is coming out in august so i am so excited about that so I have been enjoying this study as you can see I've been enjoying it I've been in depth with it as much as possible um, now there are video sessions for these this Bible study but um, it's called viewer guide I don't have the actual video footage so what I've been doing for the past three weeks is watching videos from Hannah Denton and she basically goes through the viewer guide which is kind of like the video portion in her video she spends about 20 30 minutes just talking about it filling in the blanks and stuff like that so that's literally what I've been doing to fill out some of the blanks in here and I've been taking notes from her video footage because she did this study I believe with her church so that's what I have been doing let's look here as well this was the this is the current week that I'm in so we have that so like I said we are on day four and actually this is not the key that I need that's the wrong key I need my Bible study key 
Um, so I do have two different keys, okay? I have a Christian nonfiction annotating, which I need to redo that. And then I have a Bible study key, so that's the one I'm going to use. And I have it bookmarked. So let's just put this back in the book. I mean, in the little pouch. And um, I'm going to try to fix this so you guys can hear me a little better. So bear with me for a second as I maneuver the mic around. So I feel like you guys will be able to hear me better. Okay, hopefully you guys can hear me better. It is getting ready to thunder and rain, so I apologize if you hear that. I have no control over the weather, and again, I apologize about the fan, but like I said, it's hot. I do have my coffee here. This is in my Dunkin' Donuts um, to-go cup that I bought. But um, this is the Starbucks Double Shot Energy Drink, but this is in the White Vanilla. Oh, I love this so much. The White Vanilla. It's called White Chocolate. Sorry. It's the White Chocolate. It comes in the cans. Um, normally, I could find them at Walmart, but Walmart doesn't sell the White Chocolate anymore, so I get mine from ShopRite. They are so delicious, and then I normally just add other flavors. This time, I just added uh, two tablespoons of um, French Vanilla Syrup to it, and it is so creamy so good I did have some ice in here melting because um, it's hot like I said so I'm actually gonna walk through with you guys on how I do this I'm not sure how long this video is gonna be hopefully it's not too long but we'll see um, so anyway day four like I said I have completed the sessions already um, and you know it's very very personal some of the questions I don't answer because I feel like my answers would always change and I don't really know which ones are personal so we're gonna keep going <laughs> but um so yeah so first thing I like to do ahead of everything else is I go through with my uh blue this is kind of like a baby blue I guess you would say my baby blue um Crayola super tips and I go in and mark all the scriptures it just it helps me to know that there are scriptures involved so I literally just go through however many pages there is or there are to mark every single scripture every verse mentioned even if it's mentioned like three times on the same page I don't care I mark them all I like knowing that I can directly just look to where I have highlighted blue and I can see all the scriptures even if it's like multiple times like Jonah 2 9 is mentioned here 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 and here four times but that doesn't matter to me as long as I know there's scripture on the page I'm content oh so this is actually a short one alrighty that's great this is a short one so that's awesome so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually date at the bottom I like to keep track of when I've completed a date so like I said this was yesterday 710 we are on 711 here we go so day four coming clean I'm not sure if this is gonna cause copyright issues I hope it doesn't but we're still gonna do it anyway so coming clean but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of Thanksgiving that which I have vowed I will pay salvation is from the Lord Jonah 2 9 so what I'm gonna do is as I'm reading through um, I will sort of speed up the video because I don't want it to be like a super long video and then when I slow down the video I'll talk about what I highlighted why I highlighted it and things like that simply how I have gone through and marked up some of these now there won't always be there are some pages that just don't get marked up um, if I can find a page right now for you guys nope that's not one nope nope can't find the page I'm looking for Think here yeah like on this page there was not much a lot of marking being done so um, we're just gonna speed up let me read through and uh, I'm just going to start with this page first and then we'll go to the next page. So I'm going to speed up the camera now. Okay, so I've read this much here and let me see if I can... Okay. So I read this much, and um, this is all that I underlined on this page. So the first portion here says, no more hoarding, no more laziness. They have to clean, organize, and maintain their home if they want to live 
um, to continually, I'm sorry, if they want to continue to live in peace, they have to choose to live differently. So I'm going to underline that in pink, and pink for me is basically personal reflections. Anything that I can um, personally connect with, anything that I feel like I need to just keep in the forefront of my mind is what um, I highlight in pink. So I feel like that's just essential to know. And then on this page, it says, act in conjunction with God's direction, choose to live differently, to walk down a different path, and to maintain what he puts in place. So this is a tricky one because anything that is sort of um, an action, something that is um, uh, an application kind of thing, I do in mint. But I also mark things in orange that I need to understand. So act in conjunction with God's direction. Normally I would do in mint, but I'm going to mark it in orange. Because that's something I really want to understand. That's one of the steps we mentioned earlier in the week. And then the rest of this will be actionable things that need to take place for me. So going to the questions, it says we've, all, um, we've walked through the three steps of reconciliation with God. See if you can list them without looking back at your notes. And... I know the first one is to acknowledge your sin. <laughs> so, I know it's acknowledge your sin. And I'm going to have to look back because, yep, that's what I'm going to have to do. Go back to day one. Yeah, so, <laughs> it is acknowledge your sin. Um... They all start with A's, that's why it's there. Oh, obviously the answers are over there. <laughs> so, um, ask for forgiveness. And I believe it is to accept. Accept what? I'll oh, see, no, I got it wrong. <laughs> so, um, it's not ask for forgiveness first, that's actually last. So. I need to find my light out. And I apologize about the shadow of me in the moment, but I'm grabbing my correction tape. So I got them backwards. <laughs> but at least I know that they are, you know, two and three, right? Right. So we're going to mark that there. And then. And this is correction tape. It is like white out, but it's like a sticker. So. So it's acknowledge your sin, acknowledge your sin, um, accept his discipline, accept God's discipline, and then ask for forgiveness. Okay. And then the final step to that would be act in conjunction with God's direction. And um, quickly flipping back to day one, these are the uh, sort of four uh, steps to reconciling with God, which is acknowledge your sin, accept his discipline, ask for forgiveness, and then act on his direction. Um, so then it says, this week I've been using an illustration of being lost going to a restaurant. Match up each stage of the quest with the stage of reconciliation that it illustrates. So... Um, acknowledge sin. I would say for acknowledge sin, um, B. Admit I'm headed in the wrong direction. Right? B. <laughs> um, D would be number two, which is to accept discipline. Um, right? So B, I'm sorry, because this is like, like stuff like this really makes you like really think. So um, acknowledge sin is to admit I'm headed in the wrong direction. Accept discipline. So be willing to lose ground that I've covered, which is D, right? Ask for forgiveness. I guess that would be C, find the own ramp of the other side of the freeway and get back on the right direction. And then A is number four. I'm going to assume... <laughs> 
So as best as you can determine to what divine interruption has God called you to surrender right now? So this is one of those um, personal questions that sometimes I don't answer on the page. I sort of think in my mind because it, it's an ever-changing situation. So for me, it might seem small, but for me, I think it would have to be um, just reconciling with my father. Um, that honestly would be kind of like God's divine divine interruption for me um, that he wants me to surrender to and I have one of those things where I, I don't want to <laughs> honestly I'm, I'm not even gonna lie because there's just been too much hurt concerning that and um, I'm not gonna say my dad is a my father is a, a terrible guy he's not a terrible guy it's just he's done certain things he's broken too many promises he's hurt four of his kids it's just like I I don't know but um, that is something God is continuously telling me to surrender to and I have my moments when I'm like all right and then let him do something wrong I'm just like I don't care anymore I give up so for me it's it, it has to be that and again I'm not gonna write it down it's just things that I um, questions like those like I said I don't write an answer to because it's ever-changing depending on the season in my life and for right now I guess the divine intervention that um, God has really called me to surrender to right now is just reconciling with my father. Um, so then next it says, what are the next steps you can take to get on ramp and head in the right direction with God? Okay, so um, obey the prompting I know I've been receiving from the Holy Spirit. Yes. Set aside regular time daily to hear God through his word. So, duh. Yes. Go back and tend to that matter in my past that has been a barrier to him. Oh, Jesus. I, I, I like that. Go back and tend to that matter in my past that has been a barrier to hearing God speak. And um, that alone is a sermon. That's, that's a word. Um, just because there's a lot of things that we tend to try to bypass to keep our relationship with God um, and to build on it. But you really can't build on brokenness. Um, and... <laughs> I can't say that because God takes your brokenness and he builds on that but you yourself cannot take your brokenness and build on that it, it, it it's kind of complicated how I'm trying to say it so I have to figure out a different way to say it but I hope you guys get what I'm saying um, then it says finally break down and surrender to God turning loose of what I've been grasping um, yes get help from a pastor or counselor because this obstacle has proved to be too big for me alone yes but for me right now in the stage of life I'm not gonna mark that but I definitely think that's crucial if you're dealing with something that you can't um, overcome on your own that's why you have leaders within the church you have your bishops you have your pastors you have associate pastors you have leaders that hopefully you can go to I can go to my leaders all of my leaders in my church um, that are like pastors and bishops and speak to them I can go to the evangelists if I have a problem I can go to the elders if I have a problem the other ministers if I have a, like I can go to the people within my ministry if there's a struggle that I'm going through um, so I feel like that's important if you don't have that within your church then you really should reconsider the ministry that you're in and um, really try to figure out what within yourself is not allowing you to build that kind of relationship with your leaders but um, moving on so onto this page again I'm going to read I'm going to underline and then come back to tell you guys what I'm marking everything as and then to get into the questions so principle number four going with God so This is what I have underlined. Now we're going to mark it up. So starting over here, it says being in God's will was the best direction he could travel. Then it says abandon the path of disobedience and defiance and get in step with God's plan. So I'm going to use yellow for being in God's will because that's a key point to understand. It's a key point, but it's not crucial. Crucial things I mark in orange, things that are like 
important but not crucial I mark in yellow and then we have the mint like I said for application type of points then it says Jonah did not allow the despair of his circumstances to keep him from firmly agreeing to go with God and it says any time is a good time to set your sights and actions on obedience so we're gonna go with orange and then yellow or yellow and orange sorry I'm going to go with green because green is for any type of definitions that I do. And it says Hebrew word translated bow implies a promise, gift of sacrifice, not merely a course of action. I'm going to go back with mint. This is more of an action as well as something that's important, but I'm going to mark it more so as an action. Um, I'm going to go with gray. Anything that has questions to it that really make me think, I go in with gray. And then last, whatever you are holding on to in this life, hold it loosely so it won't hurt when the Lord has to pry your fingers open. And this is a quote from a woman from Chuck Swindle's class. But um, I'm going to mark it as orange because I think that's just really important. We need to know to hold on to things loosely and not too tight because there will be times when God asks it for it back. Like, for many people um, in ministry, they hold on to these titles of being an evangelist, of being a pastor, of being a prophet. But then when God asks you to give it back, are you going to hold on to that title or are you going to be, be able to give it up? Um, if God blesses you with a job and that job becomes your number one everything over God and he takes that from you because it's now become an idol in your life are you able to just give it up there are a lot of things that God has gifted us with there are a lot of things that he has um, blessed us with and a lot of the times people take those blessings and turn them into idols and you are never to put anything over God anything that becomes your number one in your life besides God um, it becomes an idol, be it a person, be it a feeling, be it um, a, a blessing, be it a job, a house, or whatever. You know, you have to be able to give it up. Like for me, with Daughter of Increase, if God ever asked me to give it back to him, I would give it back. Would it hurt? Obviously, because I've poured my being into it. But I do know that he blessed me with this ministry. And it's still hard for me to say ministry, but I'm going to try to get used to saying the word ministry but um he has blessed me with his ministry he has blessed me with the gift of dance he has blessed me with the gift of makeup artistry i have not done makeup for a while like i completely gave up on it because it just it wasn't something that i i felt in my heart anymore um and you know god is slowly reigniting that passion for it because he gifted me with that and i think what it was is i was so obsessed with the art of makeup and I was putting it number one literally was on YouTube researching looking into beauty schools and like things it, it was sort of becoming an idol in my life and um, he took it away um, so he took that back and I mean to the point where I have not been on my beauty channel on YouTube in a minute and my beauty channel almost hit about 2,000 subscribers I then created sort of an increase and poured my passion into it but I kept it secondary to God and it's booming Far better than I even thought it would so you know like I said this this book really just makes me think and ponder and just oh I love it so much um hold on while I plug in my camera because it's getting ready to die yeah so going back to the questions um it says consider Jonah 2 9 in the margin rewrite the prayer from your personal perspective as if you prayed it so over here she has it written out it says but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of Thanksgiving that which I have vowed I will pay Salvation is from the Lord. Ooh. Huh, stuff like that really just makes you like, oh. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Bible app. Um, and I'm going to actually look this, trans this, this verse up in multiple translations first. So like I have it here. I'm going to type in Jonah 2.9. Oh, that air feels so good right now. Um, what is going on? I definitely said Jonah. There we go. What I'm going to do is look it up in an Amplified verse. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you 
with the voice of thanksgiving i shall pay that which i have vowed salvation is from the lord okay let's look at it in an esv but with the voice of thanksgiving i will sacrifice to you for oh sorry for <laughs> But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you that... Why I keep saying that? Oh my god, this is not the King James or anything. So, what I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And let's look at the CSB. Now, actually, do they have the Passion on here? I've heard they have the Passion translation. I just don't. Does anyone know what it is for the passing trends? Update available. I heard they had the passion on here, but I'm not. Oh, here it is. <laughs> the passing translation. <laughs> they don't have it in that translation. Well, that doesn't work for me. This is literally how I study you guys. <laughs> Let's try the good news. Let's say, I will sing praises to you. I will offer you sacrifice and do what I have promised. Salvation comes from the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to try to write this out. You know what, stuff like this is when I really try to get in depth, you know. So I'm going to open up the Bible Hub app. We're going to type in Jonah 2.9. I know some of you probably are like, what is she doing? Mad extra. But this is literally how I go in depth and I'm able to make it um, applicable to my life. I want to look up sacrifice. literally says to slaughter an animal as a sacrifice <laughs> we don't want that definition so we're just gonna google it okay so I will surrender we can go with surrender. It says surrendering a possession as an offering. There we go. I will surrender. So I will surrender thanksgiving to you with my voice. All that I have. Let's go back to my web. Where it says I have vowed. So can you see this? I have vowed. Hope you guys can see this. Uh, I'm gonna hit five fifty eighty seven. To vow, um, all that I have promised, all that I have promised, I will do again. A little extra, I know. <laughs> Here we go. From you, we can put my phone now.
terrible handwriting bear with me but um yeah so <laughs> i put i will surrender thanksgiving to you with my voice all that i have promised i will do from you come deliverance and victory so the next question says um do you struggle with feeling that you have wasted too much time to do to have another opportunity with god if so how does this affect your current actions and yes i have come across so many times where i felt like i just wasted too much time um like with college i feel like god is not okay so my <laughs> i'm going to do a testimony about college because i've been literally two three colleges and not because i flunked out it's just because i wasn't following the course that god designed for me and i was trying to do things on my own which caused me to be in three multiple colleges but also because tuition was just too bad going expensive but um like for me i feel like i wasted too much time with college i wasted three years of my college life literally three years um pursuing something that I didn't care for my first two, my first year I majored in pre-law and um, accounting I hated it um, literally I hated pre-law it was just it didn't do anything for me to the point where I literally almost flunked out of school I didn't flunk out but I almost did um, and then sophomore year I switched colleges um, and then I did strictly accounting but I failed economics every macroeconomics microeconomics I, I, economics was not for me um accounting classes were actually fun because i like math but it just it wasn't something i was passionate about so then i switched colleges again junior year and i went to a different college in which i majored in fashion merchandising and retail marketing and i've always had a passion for fashion i used to sit in my house like and like draw sketches of like fashion clothes um i love the art of makeup it is just amazing i think fashion itself is amazing and you guys that school i left that school with a 3.57 gpa on the dean's list um and i had so much peace when it came to that major because i was able to do the things that i truly enjoyed i also met christian friends at that school um and though i was still doing me enjoying college life being grown as we say um i was more so being pulled to god and now i feel I definitely feel a call to go back to school. I definitely desire to finish my degree, but the degree is not what I thought it would be. Um, I feel a call to go to a Bible college. Um, specifically, I desire to go to Moody Bible Institute or to go back to the college I left from and do their online courses. So I'm kind of like stuck in between the two colleges right now. I can go to Moody and um, I would do their online course, of course. And because Moody is located in um, Chicago and I'm trying to go all the way to Chicago <laughs> but you know I could do their online course and take the fashion merchandising degree that I was starting and integrate that with biblical studies which would be phenomenal because I love fashion I love beauty I love God I love the word and being able to combine the two would just be amazing but I always doubt myself I always feel like I wasted too much time I feel like there's not gonna be enough time to finish the degree so um, for me definitely with that um, it, that's like a, a struggle that I'm dealing with um, because it's stopping me from continuing on uh, with my degree right now um, and I trust me I've been in contact with Moody published um, Moody Bible Institute and Moody Bible Institute is a pub they are the college version of Moody Publishers um, and I work at Moody Publishers and I love them so much so like it's definitely something I'm thinking about I've been praying on it um, and I know school is in the cards for me it has been spoken into my life that I will go back and I will finish it's now just a matter of will I go back specifically for fresh and merchandising because that's what I want to do or if I will go to Moody Bible Institute and integrate biblical studies into the fashion degree that I already was starting. So, yeah, I'm not going to answer that question because it, it can vary all the time. But that's basically my answer, if that makes sense. Um, so moving on, it says, uh, from Leviticus 7.12, what, what were some of the details of the Thanksgiving offering? So we're going to go back to the Bible app. We're going to go back to the New King James because we actually going to use NASB. I kind of like that translation. I really just need to get an NASB Bible. Yes, so we're going to go to Leviticus. Leviticus, what, 712? 712. Um, here it is. 
Yes, yes. It says if he offers it by the um, if he offers it by way of thanksgiving, then along with the sacrifice of thanksgiving, he shall offer unleavened cakes with mixed oil, and unleavened wafers spread with oil, and cakes of well stirred fine flour mixed with oil. <laughs> so, what are some of the details of the thanksgiving offering? It seems like everything is done with oil. <laughs> um. There needs to basically be a sacrifice of Thanksgiving. Yeah, sacrifice of Thanksgiving. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I'm lost. <laughs> then it's questions like these which completely throw me off. What were some of the details of the Thanksgiving offering? I don't know. I have to leave that one blank because I, I, I don't fully understand that and this would be something that I definitely will go back into and like really research because it literally says if he offers it by way of thanksgiving then along with the sacrifice of thanksgiving he shall offer unleavened cakes mixed with oil and unleavened wafers spread with oil and cakes of well stirred fine flour mixed with oil. Let's try a different translation see if I can understand in the ESV. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't. So in the ESV it says, If he offers it for a Thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the Thanksgiving sacrifice unleavened loaves mixed with oil, unleavened wafers smeared with oil, and loaves of fine flour well mixed with oil. I guess she wants like the details, so So I'm gonna put Thanksgiving sacrifice with So I put Thanksgiving sacrifice with unleavened loaves and wafers mixed with oil and then cakes of fine flour mixed with oil were a part and I guess that's like your offer your sacrifice or your Thanksgiving there was more to it than just your words. There was an action that needed to be done in which you had to obey the details and I guess that's what it means when she says must be willing to obey the small details along the pathway to obedience, you know. So um to end we're gonna finish the last part and it says and today, by literally opening your hands as a symbol of what you are releasing to God, raise your hands to him in submission, surrender, and commit to go where he is leading. So, I'm going to underline surrender and submit to go where he is leading, and uh, mark that with this. And that's pretty much it for today, because this is day five, yeah, tomorrow which is Saturday, so yeah. That was it for today. I hope you guys got a chance to really see how I do my kind of book bookish kind of Bible studies like this, workbooks. Um, like I said, sometimes I will write the answers, sometimes I don't because when I go back, my answers most likely will change. Some of them are so personal that I don't want to write them down. But um, yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. I enjoyed today's lesson. Um, coming clean, and you know, it's, it's always hard to come clean. But I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you are interested in seeing more videos like this, just thumbs up this video. Comment down below. Like I said, I have thousands of Bible study books that I can go through with you guys. But this is the one I'm currently doing. Again, thank you, Stephanie, so much for this. It is such a good study. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. If you haven't already, subscribe. Hit that little bell to stay up to date with notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.